liberal billionaire Tom Steyer is uh, definitely running for president. Now, I say that not because he announced, but because he's releasing campaign ads and because he's literally doing town halls in the early states for voting. Um, so uh, nobody asked him to run. He doesn't care. He's going to run anyway. Why? Well, he's a billionaire, so he's going to force his name into the conversation. Um, I want to take a moment here, and we'll watch some of his ads, his most recent uh, posts on his YouTube channel, and then we'll come back and talk about him. So on the one hand, you have an ad that I think shows how out of touch he is, but then on the other hand, there's an ad that shows he's he's actually not as bad as I thought he was. Um, but then we'll get into trust issues with him and, and all that stuff. So take a look, and then, and then we'll talk about it. I grew up believing the point of our country was to be free, the promise that everyone could make a good life for themselves. But over time, I saw big corporations buy our democracy and set the rules for the sake of their profits, not for the common good. Corporate lobbyists rigged the system, leaving the majority of Americans walled off from their dreams. We need to turn this around. We need to redefine what it means to be free in the 21st century to make sure we all have the same chance to earn our fair share of America's prosperity. We need a new set of five rights, five essential protections that can never be taken away by any politician. First, the right to an equal vote in our government. Second, the right to clean air and clean water. Third, the right to a free, quality, public education. Fourth, the right to earn a living wage, so no one needs to work more than one full-time job. And fifth, the right to universal health care. I'm hosting a series of events to talk about what these rights mean for us. I hope you'll join the conversation. Go to TomStyer.com to learn more and tell me what you think. Thank you. Americans rose up this November and rejected Donald Trump. More unhinged by that than ever, this president declared war on the rule of law. But you gave Democrats the power to hold him in check. A majority vote in the House can impeach him and expose his lawless behavior for all to see. They just need the will. Please join over six million Americans and together we can give Congress the courage to act. Then we can begin building a more just and prosperous future. So let's talk about the impeachment thing first. This is how he's tried to build his national profile. Um, by being the leader on the impeachment charge. And it's in my mind, it's an attempt to try to appear to be the furthest left without actually being the furthest left. Um, so I, I honestly, I think it's just posturing. I don't think he, he knows and or cares about whether or not Trump actually gets impeached. I think that it's just, uh, he's playing an angle. This is an angle. And he's trying to be like, I'm that, I'm the impeachment guy. That's who I am. And it allows him to, to make an argument. It's a BS argument, but an argument nonetheless that me, I'm the, I'm the most progressive. That's why I've been leading the impeachment charge. Where are all the other candidates on impeachment? Um, now, you know, I don't even need to get into the details of this with you guys, because most of you know my position already. In terms of, are there substantive uh, issues that you can impeach Trump on? Well, absolutely. I mean, the emoluments clause. He's absolutely taken money from foreign governments. He's absolutely done their bidding in return. That's a violation of the emoluments clause of the Constitution. You could 100% impeach based on that. You can impeach based on his foreign policy. I mean, to be fair, you could have also impeached Obama about his foreign policy, because under our Constitution... Congress needs to declare war whenever we go to war. Now, what are we doing? We're bombing eight different countries. We don't have a, a, a declaration of war for all of those eight different countries. They're claiming that the post-9-11 war on terror authorization for use of military force extends to Yemen, where we're fighting the Houthis and we're de facto aligned with al-Qaeda. So the authorization for use of military force allowed us to both attack Al-Qaeda and help Al-Qaeda, according to these clowns. So you could impeach Trump based on that. He signed a pro-torture executive order. I mean, that's a violation of, um, you know, people's Eighth Amendment protection from cruel and unusual punishment. You can impeach over that. So it's not that I don't think there are areas where you can't impeach Trump. I think you can impeach Trump. But number one, you waste a tremendous 
tremendous amount of political capital in the process, rile up his base, assuring that they turn out in 2020, while at the same time guaranteeing that you do what? You get Mike Pence, who, by the way, is going to continue to do unconstitutional things in his own respect. So I just think it's kind of like a pipe dream. It's almost like the, the, the strictest interpretation of Russiagate, where people, corporate Democrats, are just totally convinced that, like, Trump is literally a Vladimir Putin puppet and he's like taking orders from him. The the impeachment pipe dream strikes me as that kind of a thing. It's just like a lazy uh, thing that somebody who's generally on the right side of issues believes in, but they don't haven't really thought through much of it. But I think Tom Steyer here is just, he's just playing an angle. He's just posturing so that he can run in 2020. And also, I'm pretty sure that for all the people who signed the impeachment, um petition, he's also getting their email and all their information for the upcoming race. So, kind of fucking greasy and disgusting. Now, um, the other the other ad actually wasn't bad. So, it's too vague, that's clear, but it's also, he's hinting at the right thing, so, oh, he, he wants five new rights, equal, equal vote. Now, you'd have to get into the details of that, what do you mean by that? Do you mean we're going to have automatic voter registration and ranked choice voting, because then I totally agree with you, and I, I'll support those policies to the hilt, okay? I mean, those are awesome, awesome policies. But what do you mean by that? Oh, we're going to guarantee an e equal vote. I need the details. Uh, when he says, um, you have a right to clear clean air and water. Okay, that's good, but that's a really low bar. So, again, I want more specifics on that. What are you going to do? Who's going to be the head of the EPA? What are the new regulations at the EPA going to be? What, like, what... How does this pan out? Then he says, oh, a right to a free public education. Here I'm going, hold on now. He didn't actually say a right to free college, but he said a free public education. I think there's a reason why he didn't use the word college. He's given himself those that wiggle room to use the weasel words that I'm uh, you know, so attuned to because I've seen politicians fuck us over so many times before that I have an ear for, you know, being off. Why are they... It's like when Hillary used to say, I'm forgetting the dark, unaccountable money out of politics. Well, why did you add the words dark and unaccountable? You should have just said, I'm forgetting the money out of politics. She added the words dark and unaccountable because what she means is, I want to allow the money in politics, I just want more transparency laws so you know who's buying our politicians. Well, then that's not a strong position on corruption. That's like mostly pro-status quo. So when he says, I, you know... Um, I'm for free public education. Does that include college? Because if it doesn't, then that's not good. Um, and then he says, right to a living wage. Totally agree. And that's enough for me on that front. And then he says, right to universal health care. Again, totally agree. Um, I, I think it would be interesting, though, if somebody asked him in the debate stage, do you believe in Medicare for all? Because d Tom Steyer might be the kind of guy who says, oh, no, I believe in universal health care. And then that pivots to, I mean, universal access to health care. And then that pivots to, well, let's just expand the Affordable Care Act and keep the heart of the system in place, which is the private insurance system, but still give everybody coverage somehow. We need to know the details of what you mean by universal health care. I think you should say Medicare for all, and um, then I would be off your ass. But when you just say universal health care, I've seen too many politicians say, I believe in universal health care, and then that becomes universal access to health care. Whereas Medicare for all is not that, it actually is covering everybody, and it's government-funded with our tax dollars. Okay. So, final point I want to make is this. The first thing is, he's not going to win. He's not going to win because uh, one of the things is, let's be serious, the way he talks. Now, that could be, you could say that's surface level and that's stupid, but I'm guaranteeing you he's not going to win because we're not in his era. He's Martin O'Malley 2.0. Martin O'Malley ran on a platform that was much more similar to Bernie Sanders' platform than Hillary Clinton's platform. And Martin O'Malley got negative 12 votes. There was famously, I remember covering the story, he did an event, I think it was in Iowa, I could be wrong about the state, don't quote me on that. But there was like one, literally one person that showed up to his presidential event. One person. So it just, it, it just wasn't going to happen because he was, he's the old school politician, he's the 1980s style politician. The, I'm going to give you my talking points and I'm going to use my point at you with my thumb because that's better than pointing with my finger. The finger's too aggressive, so I'm going to point with my thumb and it's all the, the you know, the platitudes and the cliches and the, and the controlling your rhythm and cadence in how you speak. See, when I'm talking to you guys now, I'm talking to you like we were sitting at a bar together and I'm just talking. 
when uh, Martin O'Malley talks, it's like every single thing is robotic and structured and planned out, and I am putting the inflection over the proper words. And Tom Steyer's the same. Too self-conscious, uh, apparently not familiar enough with public speaking, too coached, and he comes across as fake, and there's something about that that's fundamentally untrustworthy in people, and people don't like it, so he's got no chance just based on the way he talks. But uh, the other point is, he's a billionaire hedge fund manager. A billionaire hedge fund manager. Now, listen, on the billionaire thing alone, I'm not pounding the gavel and saying, uh, never, you know, there's no way he could, you know, be a good president. FDR was rich, came from a rich family, and he was viewed as a traitor to his class. Okay, so it's possible to be a traitor to your class. So I'm not harshly judging him on that. But on the hedge fund manager thing, am I going to judge you a little bit? Yeah, I am. Because <laughs> you're a hedge fund manager. I mean, your life experience is fundamentally the opposite of, you know, somebody who should be a, a left president, you know? I don't know about you guys, but I want somebody who has been immersed in these issues, Medicare for all, free college, living wage, activism, union work, to some extent. I don't need, you know, you don't need to be a perfect, whatever, community organizer like Barack Obama was or something like that, and obviously he didn't turn out to be, he was more of a centrist than anything else, but I digress from that. I don't need, I'm not a stickler on past stuff, so not many things are a red flag to me, but billionaire plus hedge fund manager, a little bit of a red flag, just a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit of a red flag. So I don't think he's going to win. So this is, we're just having the conversation for the sake of having the conversation. But in some ways, he's exactly what you think he is, Tom Steyer. And in other ways, he's slightly better than what we originally gave him credit for. But we need to talk about him because he's going to run. And that's a guarantee. And you heard it here first.